Hey, welcome to the second part of creating 3D medieval boots. In this part, we're gonna be working on the straps and a little bit on sculpting the folds. So to start off, we're just gonna be creating a quick mask. And then we extract this mask. Now we're gonna shape it with the move brush until it has a shape of the strap that we want. So just like the main part of the boots, I'm constantly polishing and zero mashing because I want to work with a clean topology. Now we're gonna append a sphere and we're gonna use this as a little metal bolt. Now I want to break the perfection of the sphere. Like simulate like it's been hit with a hammer. I'm gonna bring my little strap inside Maya so I have a little bit more control over the topology. And with the added edge flow, I'm just gonna smooth out the topology even more. I'm just hitting the G key to repeat the last step. So I'm adding a bit more topology because I want to have a nice loop around the border. Now that I have the topology that I want, I'm gonna continue to shape it. And I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking right now. I think we have a nice good base for a strap. So let's continue to part 2, where we're gonna be creating a buckle. And I'm gonna be doing this inside Maya, as this object is a little bit more complicated and it's easier just to model it out. When I model I like to start with a plane and I like to just add some segments and move things around to get a basic flat shape. Once I'm happy with that shape I'm gonna add some thickness, I'm gonna be grabbing edges, I'm gonna be moving them around. 
And once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna grab some edges and I'm gonna baffle them so I can start smoothing out the object. So I wanna forward this edge a bit, so I have a bit more depth. And I'm gonna hit the tree key to have a smooth mesh preview, just so I can see how it will look like once I subdivide it. As you can see, I model the same way I sculpt. I go for my very simple basic shape, and I keep pushing it more and giving more details as I go. And now that I'm happy with the buckle, I'm gonna be placing it onto the strap so you can see how it works with the strap and I can start moving the strap around the buckle. So I actually noticed that I forgot to model like a little thing that will go around the strap. So I'm just gonna put a cylinder, I'm gonna shape it into it and then we're gonna dynamash it in. So I'm just checking if I like how it's connecting and I like it so we're gonna merge it down together. And now we can do a dynamesh so the two objects are welded together. Then I'm gonna z remesh it to get a nice topology. I'm gonna subdivide it. And then I'm just gonna project the details back from before we did the dynamesh. Now we have a nice topology and everything's looking clean and we got the details back. Just delete the dynamashed one and now we have this one left. Gonna polish it up a little bit. Now that we have the buckle here, we can start forming the leather strap around the buckle. I 
again the smooth directional brush is amazing it will smooth your mesh only one way i use it all the time still i'm always keeping an eye on my topology and instead of sculpting i'm just kind of modeling inside the brush now we're also going to make a little clip for the buckle, so it can actually hold the leather strap. So I'm just doing the same as how we did with the buckle. Basic shape, then bevel it and smooth it and bring it inside the brush. Up to part 3 of this video, where we're gonna be taking the leather strap and we're gonna refine it. If your strap starts to look messy at this point, you just want to go in with the polish and polish it out again. This will make it a clean, nice mesh. Now that I like how it looks, I'm gonna duplicate the strap for the underlaying strap. Gonna delete a little part as I don't need it for the underlaying strap. Now just move it into place. A good way to create a hook in a strap is to mask out a little part and use the transpose tool and just rotate it. I'm hiding stuff and I'm keeping a close eye on the, the way the strap is connecting around the buckle. As I prefer to have it going how it should be. Again, masking and polishing to clean it up. I'm gonna bend the strap a little bit to make it look less boring and even.
when you're working with one element of an object it's nice to just hide the rest of it right now i'm hiding the whole boot so i can just focus on the straps at this point since i like how it's looking i'm gonna go into dynamic and apply it this will change the dynamic to having actual subdivisions I'm gonna make a duplicate. And now I want to delete the thickness again and delete the subdivisions. And we're gonna be doing this to create a nice little thin layer of leather above the strap. So again, activate dynamic and let's see how our thickness is looking. The nice part about dynamic thickness is that you can tweak it so easily. You can keep changing the thickness, the segments, it's amazing. Since I like it, I'm gonna merge them together so I can edit them more easily together. Let's make a layer. It's always nice to work on layers with details. Now I want to add some noise, as it should be like a rough ladder underneath a nice ladder. So in the lower subdivision we can add some noise at the deformation tab. So at this point I'm messing around with the sliders of the lay intensity and polishing just trying to get a look that I like. We can also use some surface noise to add a little bit of breakup. When I'm changing colors, most of the times it's just because I'm bored of looking at a white mesh. So it's just to refresh myself a bit. Let's apply the thickness.
just make a layer and I'm gonna make some indents for the ladder where the buckle clip can go through. Let's also sculpt some details in by hand, just using the standard brush, keeping it simple. Let's also duplicate a little bolt to the other side. Let's start merging everything together as I like how our strap is looking. I'm just doing this so I can easily duplicate it as I need more straps than one. So part 4 of the video where we're gonna be finishing it up for this part. Let's start duplicating our strap. And I'm just using the move brush to move them into place. I'm also gonna move our underlying strap to be closer to the surface, so there's not too much of a gap. If there's too much of a gap, it's gonna be a pain with making the low poly and the base. Always when you're working with a high poly, you wanna be thinking forward about the next step. When I'm doing high polys constantly, I have the low poly in mind. I'm also going to change the colors once again, I want to have colors that will be a bit closer to my final texture, so I can have a better visualization of how the design is looking. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna be closing some of the big gaps here as I don't really like how it's looking and as it will be a lot easier for the low poly if there are no gaps. Let's also flare out the corner a little bit, just as it's a nice breakup. Just like we did in the first part of this series, I'm polishing out, I'm using a layer to control the intensity of the folds. I'm just looking for something that I like. Now that I have something that I like, I'm gonna start sculpting some things in with hand. I'm gonna be removing some folds, I'm gonna be sculpting some folds in. Now we can turn our layer on and off to see how much it adds to sculpt stencing by hand. And that's it for the second part of this series. In the third part we're gonna be adding some details like stitching. If you did like it or learned anything, please be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps me out. And see you in the third part.